Hi, Nelson. How's your evening? Hey, good. Good evening. How is it there? Is it dark yet? Uh, it is. I mean, we're we're both Pacific Coast, so we're ba basically the same hey, thing there. Yeah. You're like south. Uh, you're south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Different but, parallels. So. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, where we are, it's like the sun's mostly down, but there's still a little bit of light out. And uh, right. clearly, there's some light near where you are, because I mean, you're outside, right? Yeah, it'll be dark by the time we get done. <laughs> I have to go flip right. the light on. <laughs> okay. Light on? Wait, I thought you were outside. Aren't you out? Where, yeah, is I'm this outside. In? Oh, you are. Okay. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm outside. Yeah. Is anybody watching? It's a nice sunset. So there you go. <laughs> okay. It'll be set in a few minutes, I'm sure. So, all right. So the topic we are discussing now is going to be that slavery was the primary cause of the U.S. Civil War. So I'm going to take a little bit of time here and establish uh, the reasons why I would believe that. And then I will let you take the mic in a few moments here. Um, now, the main way that we would know what the cause of a historical event would be would be by reading the documents that were available at the time and studying the words of historians. So in order to do that, I'm going to read the quotes of the reasons for secession. Now, the Declaration of Secession by Mississippi says, quote, our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery, the greatest material interest of the world. A blow at slavery is a blow at commerce and civilization. The Declaration of Secession by Louisiana says, quote, the people of the slaveholding states are bound together by the same necessity and determination to preserve African slavery. The Declaration of Secession by South Carolina says a geographical line has been drawn across the Union and all the states north of that line have united in the election of a man to the high office of President of the United States whose opinions and purposes are hostile to slavery. The Declaration of Secession by Alabama says the election of Mr. Lincoln is hailed not simply as a change of administration, but even as the downfall of slavery. Therefore, it is that the election of Mr. Lincoln cannot be regarded otherwise than a solemn declaration on the part of a great majority of the northern people of hostility to the South, her property, and her institutions. Nothing less than an open declaration of war. And it goes on to then say that it is expected that the election of Lincoln and the possible opening of slaves would lead to, quote, inaugurate all the horrors of a San Domingo servile insurrection, consigning her citizens to assassinations and her wives and daughters to pollution and violation to gratify the lust of half-civilized Africans. The Declaration of Secession by Texas says, we hold as undeniable truths that the governments of the various states and of the Confederacy itself were established exclusively by the white race for themselves and their posterity, that the African race had no agency in their establishment, that they were rightfully held and regarded as an inferior and dependent race. And in that condition only could their existence in this country be rendered beneficial or tolerable. That in this free government, all white men are and of right ought to be entitled to equal civil and political rights. That the servitude of the African race as existing in these states is mutually beneficial to both bond and free and is abundantly authorized and justified by the experience of mankind and the revealed will of the almighty creator. All of these documents, these declarations of secession, each and every one in more or less explicitly racist terms say exactly their reason for why they are seceding and every single one of them tells us the reason they are succeeding is because of slavery. Many people will think that it is actually about states' rights. In fact, Jim Lowe, author of Lies My Teacher Told Me, wrote a book uh, called Lies That My Teacher Told Me, in which he pointed out that 60 to 75 percent of high school students have been falsely taught that the Civil War was fought over states' rights. But he says that it is, quote, complete BS. And by BS, I mean bad scholarship. Overall, it is abundantly clear what the actual cause of the Civil War is, because they told us themselves what the actual cause of the Civil War was. It was fought over slavery. The reason the South seceded was because the election of Lincoln made them believe 
that the possibility that their slaves might be taken away, the loss of an important part of their, ec their economy, their overall industry, and therefore they seceded from the union in an attempt to protect slavery. Go ahead, Nelson. <clears throat> okay, so uh, a bunch of things there. One, the quote from the lies my teacher told me, I think if you, actually the Mark Dice goes out and asks people and nobody even knows when, when the Civil War was, nobody knows anything about it. Um, some, and if you ask them, they think it was about slavery. So lies my teacher told me was that the Civil War was about slavery. That's what everybody believes. Um, I would really just, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody in the United States outside of the South specifically that would say it was not about slavery. And that is the lie our teachers told us. If it was all about slavery, they were seceding just for the point of slavery. Why in their constitution did they strictly forbid the trade of Negro slaves is what they call them. So you can go to the actual constitution. So article, whatever, section nine, uh, the importation of Negroes of the African race from an, any foreign country other than their slaveholding states or territories of the United States of America is hereby forbidden. And Congress is required to pass such laws as shall effectively prevent the same. Congress shall also have the power to prohibit introduction of slaves from any state, not a member or territory not belonging to this confederacy. And so the idea there is it's basically a carbon copy of the U.S. Constitution, which says the same thing. In 1811, they were no longer allowed to import them anymore. So if it was all about slavery, why didn't they allow for the importation of slaves? I mean, it's pretty important. It's kind of difficult to just keep a relatively small population within your borders and have that support the entire institution that you're claiming they seceded for. Two, the North did not care. The North had no reason to block slavery. I mean, the North didn't really did not care about slaves. You can read the Dred Scott decision. Dr Chief Justice Roger Taney proclaimed blacks, quote, so far inferior that they had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect, unquote. Library of Congress says that. So Dred Scott is a Virginia slave. Um, who tried to sue for his freedom in court, they rejected that. The North sent slaves back. The North really did not care. Abraham Lincoln himself, he said it was all about preserving the Union, nothing to do with slavery. He could not have possibly cared less about slavery. My paramount objective, object in this struggle is to save the Union. It is not either to save or to destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do so. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would, uh, I would do it. And if I could, whoops, if I could save it by the freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also be yeah, blah, blah. Um, what I do about slavery and the colored race, I do because I believe it helps to save the union. Um, it sounds a lot like the Iraq war. You know, we go in weapons of mass destruction. No, we don't find any. And so what does it become? Oh, no, uh, we don't have a reason. Oh, Saddam's a bad guy. Right. I'm the same, same tactic. So. The North didn't care about slaves, and we're going to fight about it. Very few slaves in the South actually, um, very few people in the South actually owned slaves. There were a few plantations of a few thousand acres that they owned slaves. The vast majority of people in the South didn't own slaves and couldn't have cared less. Uh, if, you still with me? Um, and uh, another, so. You're breaking up the, a little bit. Can you, yeah, can you still hear yeah, me? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah. I, okay. Keep going. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's for you right there. <laughs> Sorry. My alarm. So the last thing is the, the myth that slaves were black people owned by white people when in fact slaves were also white people owned by white people in many cases. The Irish were sold by the British Empire, the crown. Uh, that's why Ireland hates England so much and bad history there. And the there were many blacks, freed slaves in the South that actually owned slaves themselves. So it was not just a purely racial thing because there, again, there were many black slaves that owned or black freed slaves that owned black slaves. So I would just finish with the result of the Civil War is is the foundation for all the problems we see with the federal government today. The abolition of states' rights, the fact that states have no rights anymore, civil war is because of that. Abraham Lincoln is one of the gods of statism. That's, uh, that's my own little quote there. I don't know if I've seen that or not, but...
we had a guy from Whitworth Chapel. He wrote a book and he came and gave a talk. And I told him the same thing is like all the problems we see with the federal government today were the result of Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War. Uh, the fact that the, the southern states had the absolute right to secede. Um, Virginia almost seceded back in 1801. I talked about this in a couple other debates over the Alien and Sedition Act. So, I mean, you had an absolute right. The whole idea of the Constitution was we come together with this document. We make promises to each other. But with the right that at any time, if you feel like you no longer want to be a party to this document, you can see it at any time. So um, I'll go ahead and I've, I've got right, a bunch so of So let me go through uh, the I'll, things that you I'll were talking about there. First, you responded to my point um, that, that 65 to 75% of high school students are being taught uh, that states' rights were the cause of the Civil War by saying nobody actually thinks this. Well, actually, there was the author who was looking at the, the what is being taught in high school classrooms said that is what is being taught to students. That is the common thing that is being told, and it is bad scholarship because it's not actually the case at all. Your second argument was mm -hmm. that uh, the slave trade was banned by the Confederate Constitution. Now, it's interesting that you say that the slave trade was banned, but it didn't actually ban slavery. It only bans the importation of new slaves. In fact, the Confederate Constitution specifically says in order to be a Confederate state, you must uphold Negro slavery. This is from uh, the Confederate Constitution where it, said, it, it puts out the limitations of who can accept slaves and says that the, sla the, uh, the states themselves may by law provide to form states to be admitted into the Confederacy. In all such territory, the institution of Negro slavery as it now exists in the Confederate states shall be recognized and protected by Congress and by the territorial government. So in order to be a state in the Confederate, in the Confederacy, you were required by the Confederate constitution to accept and uphold slavery. Maybe a ban the slave trade. Okay, fine. But that's, we're not talking about the slave trade. We're talking about slavery itself. The Confederacy left specifically because they were worried that slavery would be banned. When I was reading the declarations of secession, many of them referenced the election of Lincoln as the reason why they were leaving. They, their worry was, oh no, we have this huge economic advantage right now through slavery. And if Lincoln was to ban that, our entire economy would collapse. So it is false to say that the banning of the slave trade means that they weren't actually doing it over slavery. They themselves said the reason they were seceding was over slavery. You pointed out that the North doesn't care about slaves. That's usually true. Um, and although Abraham Lincoln himself was a, Bronson termed him a closet abolitionist, uh, which was actually a pretty good phrase for it, actually. But um, he, he had a goal of uh, eventually freeing the slaves even though he himself, his first goal was to preserve the Union. And you read that quote. I agree with that. The overall North, for the most part, weren't the good guys. I, I think you could say that. But the question of the, of the discussion is whether or not it was slavery or states' rights that was the primary cause of the U.S. Civil War. And the North was fighting, yeah, it was kind of in between for the North. But for the South, primarily the reason why they were leaving was states, was for the their state, they believed they had the authority to preserve slavery. So the goal of it, the cause of it, was slavery, even if they used states' rights as their excuse for the way to get through it. You said it was a, uh, a myth that slaves were uh, entirely African-American uh, and that there were some Irish slaves as well. Well, I mean, I'm about as Irish as they come. I don't think I have, I, maybe I have one English ancestor a while back, but overall I am about as white and Irish as they come. But I can tell you, it, 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 the, the slave trade of Irish was much more wage slavery than it was actual ownership. It was very rare for whites to be owned as property. So it's a very different scenario. Um, and uh, you also said that some black people own slaves as well. That's, that's true, sure. But the reason for the Civil War, the reason why the Southern states left, they told us themselves I read 10 different state uh, declarations of secession, and all of them said the reason they were seceding was to preserve the institution of slavery. 
Um, you talked about how the result of the Civil War was statism. Uh, you know what? To a certain extent, yeah, I, I actually agree with this. The, the, the What ended up happening was now no state really has the right to secede. And the uh, the presidential power, the, the executive order power has grown significantly since then. But that doesn't have anything to do with this because we're asking the question, what was the cause of the Civil War? And the cause of the Civil War was slavery. They themselves told us that. You last, The last point you had, so yeah, one more point. Okay. I, I, I want to read one more quote. Uh, you said that uh, okay. you, you said that all the states did have a right to secede, and I agree with that. I actually, so did so did the uh, the Congress at the time. Two constitutional amendments have been proposed, saying, "Can we stop organization? Can we stop states from seceding?" They both failed. James Madison also said that states had the right to secede, and when it was proposed to him an, an opportunity for him to say states do not have the right to secede, he struck it down. So overall, I agree with that. At the end of the day, though, the, the question is, what was the primary cause of the Civil War? And so I want to read a quote from Alexander Stevens, the vice president of the Confederacy, who in his cornerstone speech, which discussed the differences between the American and Confederate constitutions, he said, quote, the new constitution has put at rest forever all the agitating questions relating to our peculiar institution, African slavery, as it exists amongst us, the proper status of the Negro in our form of civilization. This was the immediate cause of the late rupture and present revolution. What was conjecture in a long time ago is now realized fact. Those ideas were fundamentally wrong. They rested upon the assumption of the equality of races. This was an error. Our new government is founded upon exactly the opposite idea. Its foundations are laid, its cornerstone rests, upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. This, our new government, is the first in the history of the world based upon this great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. With us, all of the white race, however high or low, rich or poor, are equal in the eye of the law. Not so with the Negro. Subordination is his place. He, by nature or by curse against Canaan, is fitted for that condition which he occupies in our system. Long so I think you could have read the same quote from people without the foundation of statehood or something. You could have read the same quote from a variety of Northerners, um, you know, General Grant, what, all these people. The people that fought in the Civil War were anti-slavery in many cases. Robert E. Lee was anti-slavery. In fact, he was asked to fight for the Union, but he fought for the South because he was, because, quote, I am a Virginian first and an, a member of the Un United States second. So um, let me just get down to the words here. So the cause of the U.S. Civil War, you just agreed with me. The, the states had an absolute right to yeah, secede, Yeah, I, I don't correct? disagree that they had a right to secede. So what states, I question is what the cause Okay, was. okay. So, Yes, but your your well your your claim is why they caused, succeeded, not, right? I mean, I agree they had a right to do it, but that wasn't their prime. Okay, okay, so there we go. So they had a right to secede. Who started the Civil War? The North. The North fired the first shot. The North fired the first shot, not because they wanted to free the slaves. The South seceded first before there was an actual. No, 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 no. The South seceded. They had an absolute right to secede. I don't know if you it's agree absolute with that. Absolute right, but they had an accepted right to secede. Sure. So we're getting to, well, the const, according constitutionally, they had a right to secede. Right, the entire forming of the Constitution, the thirteen colonies, was you come to get we come together as thirteen colonies. We're still thirteen individual colonies, but we have this kind of European type pact where we will you know support each other, and there's very little federal government. You know, five members in Washington's cabinet. I think it was five to ten. Uh, you know, that that's grown a little bit from f somewhere around five to 10 to like 50,000 or something, right? But they had an absolute right to secede. So your contention is why they seceded. And you said it was for slavery. And I say the North did not attack them to abolish slavery. And so whatever reason that they seceded for, you know, whatever, whatever it was based on, I I think I would contend that it was based on a whole variety of things uh, the tariff, the North was really economically trying to control the South. But we agree they had an absolute right to secede constitutionally. 
They seceded. Not, not absolute. Well, they they said they. Well, there's a well, why absolute not? right is a very different idea, but whatever. They had a right to secede. Sure. Okay, so it's, they had a right to secede. They seceded, right? Yes. And what happened? The North attacked them with the intent of preserving the Union. That was the intent. The intent of preserving the Union, not to free the slaves. They didn't go after the South to free the slaves. They could have done that in 1860. They could have done that in 1859. They could have done that in 1858. They could have done, you know, on down the line, yada, yada, yada. They didn't. They attacked them with the sole purpose of keeping the South in the Union. And the South was very important to the Union because the North was very industrialized. The South had the commodities. They needed the commodities and they had price controls on those commodities and they needed to force the South to sell them to the North at very low prices, which was virtually bankrupting the South. It was slavery is not an economically good policy, right? It, it's like prison, right? It's not economically feasible to have prison labor. It is because they're there because they're in prison. You can pay them low wages. But if you just grab people and you stick them in prison and you force them to work, you're paying $50,000 a year for a person to make license plates or something. Slavery, it's just not an economically viable policy, right? So it's not something they would ever, in fact, before the Eli, uh, Eli invented the cotton gin, it was really about to fall apart altogether because cotton was really not a good commodity. They couldn't grow because it took too much to pull the stuff out. So uh, let, let me let me go back to, I believe in the natural God-given right of independent rule of every individual cannot be owned by another person lest he desires it. So I just want to be clear. I am against slavery. Okay. I am against slavery. <laughs> so I just have to be clear because well, there might be some leftists watching this that think I'm like fighting slavery. Neither, neither was what? the declarations of reasons for why any of the Confederate states left. None of them were against slavery. Well, that's because there were some very power, powerful interests that they had to get on board. But the reason for seceding was not for slavery. And again, this is the reason for the whole Civil War. I mean, you can say if you want uh, that they seceded because they want to protect slavery. But the Civil War itself was the North aggressing on the South, preventing them from seceding. The North did not attack the South in order to free the slaves. Nobody in the North, virtually nobody in the North was willing to fight to free the slaves. And nobody in the South was willing. I mean, think about this, OK? You have the, the South. The idea here is the South was willing to fight, sacrifice their entire wealth, all their fortunes, their lives, so that a few people somewhere down the street could own a few other people. I, I, I just think logically it makes absolutely no sense at all. Yes, there were a few people that enjoyed the benefits of slavery, but the vast majority of Southerners really didn't care. They were just subsistence farmers. They may have had a couple acres at best, and they were working them by themselves, okay? So uh, I, I just think it, it's just not reasonable to think that the South seceded, even for the primary reason of slavery. So you can talk about the, the states, but again, this is we're talking about secession, getting a few people on board. The, con the U.S. Constitution, the United States itself seceded from England with the same constitution, basically. Okay, so you said that the North did not do this to free the slaves. <laughs> to a certain level, I agree with you. There was, uh, the North were not the good guys. I said this earlier. The North had some people who were fighting to free the slaves. They had some people who were fighting to preserve the Union. They had some people fighting for different reasons. Different people had different reasons from the North. But we aren't as much talking about the North here. We're talking about the primary cause of the Civil War. In the historical context, the reason why the Southern states seceded is because of a fear that Abraham Lincoln would prevent them from owning slaves. They specifically said that. There were also documents from the Confederate leaders saying there was a worry that even if uh, someone else may have been elected, it, it, it would have happened as well. But if Lincoln was elected, they were almost certain that he would take away their right to own slaves. Now, why was that so important to them? Slavery was a multi-billion dollar industry back then. Adjusted for inflation today, that is in the trillions. The entire economy of the Confederate states was dependent on having slaves. They could not function 
it would have de utterly devastated their economy to have lost the institution of slavery. This is why you asked why people were willing to fight. It wasn't necessarily, they weren't fighting for the right to be abusive to slaves. I'm not saying that's what they were fighting for, but they were fighting for their economy, for their right to have, or what they believed was their right to own slaves. That was what was so important to them. They, they felt that the entire economy would come down otherwise. This is why they specifically said, wait, wait, just a moment here. I'll, I'll give you a moment, a moment here. Every single one of their state, con state declarations of secession said the reason that they were leaving was because of slavery. Also, in the Confederate Constitution, it specifically said any state that is admitted into the Confederacy must allow slavery. That was what distinguished them from the North. That is also why their vice president said what distinguishes the Northern states from the Southern states was the institution of slavery. We're not talking about the North's reasons. We're talking about the primary cause of the Civil War. Uh, and I think I will turn that over to you now. You still with me? Nelson. No, okay. So again, slavery was not a. Yeah, you're. Oh, there. You got. You're back. Uh, oh, crap. I can hear you, yeah. Can you hear me? You hear me, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Um, again, the slavery was, it was important to some people, very few people in the South, rel relatively. The way that blacks were treated in the South and in the North was really not much of a difference. There were freed blacks in the South, there were freed blacks... Uh, all, the, everybody in the North, I guess, would have been freed, but they weren't treated any better. They didn't have a right to vote. They were, um, in fact, the North didn't even consider them people in terms of counting them, right? So this is the, this is the three fifths, is it a three fifths compromise in terms of the South wanted to count them, but didn't want to give them representation. The North didn't want to count them at all because they knew that they would have a lose a lot of representation in the in the in the House. So there were a lot of reasons that they seceded. Um, I would contend that number one was the was economic, and it was not the economics of slavery, which I, I actually want to write. I'll wait toward yeah, I'll wait the end, and we could talk about the repercussions and the way that it happened. And I think this is this is my contention that the reason that the, the contention between the blacks and the in, in the United States is very different than between them in England and other places. Uh, it would have been the English method, which is the government actually bought them and freed them. So there was no contention. You look at the you're way really the fuzzy. South, you know, they, you're, they you're see really breaking up a lot. The I'm end not of, really hearing what you're saying here. Sort of the end of slavery as the total, but I. I okay. Yeah, it's a little better now. Um, so, am I any better? Okay. So, I would say, let me just list off some of the reasons. And this is from ushist.com, H-I-S-T. And reasons for, first of all, there was the tariff. Prior to the war, about 75% of the money to operate the federal government was derived from the southern states via an unfair sectional tariff on imported goods. And 50% of the 75% was just for southern states. So. This is a, you know, sort of a indentured servitude of the South. So that's no, reason number one is economic. So the tariff, centralization versus states' rights. States' rights was absolutely a, a reason. I mean, that's why, again, that's why General Lee led the South and he didn't take the North. So one is the the secular humanism of the North. Uh, the And you still see that today, by the way, the difference between the North and the South is terms of cultural differences. Uh, control of Western territories, Northern industrialization, wanted the so Southern resources, Islander, uh, slander of the South by Northern newspapers, New Englanders attempt to investigate massive slave rebellions in the South. And slavery was number nine on this list, Northern aggression against Southern states. 
and again, that's kind of what I got to in the beginning is if we're talking about the Civil War. So, I mean, you can say that the South seceded to protect slavery, but that's not the cause of the Civil War. They had a right to secede for whatever reason they wanted, and slavery would have eventually ended. Uh, slavery is just not an economically viable policy. It takes a lot of manpower. You got me? Okay. It takes a lot of manpower to, uh, to, okay. to keep uh, them. They were already rebelling quite significantly. So. Okay, I'm not really uh, sure where you're getting the idea that slavery wasn't economically viable. Um, yeah, okay. I'll the go, estimates yeah, I'll from the time say that even in monetary amounts back then, it was a multi-billion dollar industry. And that, that is with inflation not even included. It was multi-billion in the money that they had back then. It was the primary driver for their entire economy. It could not function without slaves so i don't maybe the institution would have eventually crumbled sure but at least with the what they had back then it was the primary force between behind their entire economy so if it was taken away the entire southern economy would have crashed that is why they were willing to fight and die to preserve they were they literally were like whether they wanted to hurt or, or not hurt black people wasn't really the point. They, they were really focused on preserving their own well-being, which, because of the system they'd set up, required the use of slaves, which is awful. But that was the system that they had set up, and that's why they were willing to fight and die for it. Now, you presented um, – you, you talked about the three-fifths compromise – and how the North wasn't that great. Yeah, I agree. The North wasn't that great. I've said that multiple times. But we're not really questioning the North in this. We're questioning what was the primary cause? What was the driver? What made this happen? And the answer is slavery. Uh, all right. We'll do it back. Well, I have to, I have to contend right my, there. Because we're talking about the South. My, my claim is that your claim I am is looking the at the South historical succeeded. evidence. You haven't presented mainly any because of slavery. Evidence. I have presented right to what they said. How can you say that they didn't do this? When well, no, that's a, no yes, but I can present. A, so yes, so the secession itself. I am saying that yes, there were many claims for slavery as being part of the reason. Um, in fact, on the secession documents. Because there was many, there were several very powerful people in the South that they wanted to get on board and they wanted that. But we're talking about the Civil War itself, not the, the official reason that the state seceded. We agree the states then, uh, had a right to I will secede. Ask, I will say the same thing that I said to Bronson. And the North to say the same thing. Them, that would mean the Civil you War. would have to prove that the North or uh, that the, uh, the, the United States would have allowed other states one way or the other. Uh, if, if what you are saying is true, then the North would not have allowed anyone to leave over any issue. But that is false. The only reason that they stepped in with regards to the Confederacy was because slavery was such a large issue. They would not have stepped in under many other issues. That is why earlier I presented a couple of pieces of evidence on this. Like, for instance, the idea that the representatives Daniel E. Sickles and Thomas B. Florence and Otis S. Ferry had proposed constitutional amendments that would have prohibited secession. Those all failed. It was accepted. The North and, and the overall United States would have been all right with most forms of secession. However, not this form of secession. If you can prove that the North would have stepped in to stop, uh, or I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but the... <laughs> You would have this would be on your burden of proof to, to show that it is different, that, that uh, there was a difference between the reason that they stepped in on slavery and that they wouldn't have stepped in for something else. Well, again, it was like counterfactual there, so. Proving that no, I don't think they. I think they absolutely would have stepped in. And I read so, Lincoln's quote himself. He said he didn't care about slavery. He just wanted to preserve the union. The United States. So that was in a would letter to anyone from seceding. Yeah, I think it was in a letter to his reason. wife. Can you prove that? And how do you know? And how do you know? Well, they didn't because nobody else seceded. Because nobody has tried to secede ever since then, and they're not allowed to. 
They're not allowed to. Well, but we know that they almost seceded no for another reason back in 18, again, that was 1801, I think it was. The Virginia almost seceded. They threatened. Well, again, so why did the North attack them? Are you, are you honestly saying, are you honestly saying the North attacked the South purely to free the slaves? Or at least primarily to free the slaves. And I say that's just not, that, there's no reason to believe that at all. You're saying that the South part seceded part the, for the purpose of slavery, but why did the North the keep them in the Union? Why did the North try to preserve driver. the Union? No, they had just been a smaller the issue, they had, had it been economic policies. Less politically charged, and by the way, we have already seen that about, secession was accepted both in the North and the South. I can actually read you, I'm going to read a couple more quotes about this, that it was accepted that it, had it been a smaller issue, it is likely that it probably would have been okay. Um, even, even in the Northern States, even during the time of, of the civil war, there was, this was, uh, the New York times said March 21, 1861, that quote, there is growing sentiment throughout the North in favor of letting the Gulf States go. There had been multiple constitutional amendments proposed that would have prevented secession. They all failed. Had it been, had it been a smaller issue? The North would have allowed states to secede, but since slavery okay, is so such doesn't that, a major doesn't that, issue, the North did step in. Yes, and but doesn't that help my point? Because the only Boston, purpose was Lincoln himself. Lincoln was the guy Boston that kept them from seceding, right? And he didn't care about slavery. He didn't care about. I mean, you want to say he's a closeted anti-abolish? He's wow. an closeted abolish. <laughs> but you know, a closeted abolitionist is no abolitionist at all. So we can go and say, try to read his mind from the dead, a uh, dead person, and say, oh, you know, we think that back then he actually believed this. But there's no evidence for that. I mean, again, in the letters he wrote, he just he said no, he didn't believe that. He didn't really care about it. He was he was. I mean, you talked about racism, the racist quotes. Yes. But Lincoln was the same way, and so were all the Northerners. They were absolute, in today's standards, they were absolute racists. And there's no reason they would have stepped in to try to prevent the South from seceding You're because of slavery. They prevented the South from seceding because of the economic policies. They needed the Southern crops. And you talked about a multi-billion. There were 4 million uh, slaves in a population of 9 million people. In, so in numbers at the time. Some, uh, what was the number you gave again? 25 billion, 3 billion. The overall. It, so are you talking about the, the commodities? No, it's not just the value of the slaves. It's the value that they add to the when, economy. That's, I, I just were, think that's a completely uh, absurd uh, number. What? Yeah. And I think that's just, a, that's a completely ridiculous number. I just think that's ridiculous. Numbers, I just think that's a ridiculous number. That's about a thousand dollars per person at the time when nobody actually had a thousand dollars. No, I don't think it was a big economic advantage. It's not something that could have lasted very long. Okay, so one of the things, one of the, one of the things the South was afraid of is the the whole slavery uprisings, right? You had Harper's Ferry, you had a whole series of what was it, some of the famous ones where the slaves rebelled and they, in fact, um, it was a John Brown raid, right? He raided the fort and grabbed the guns. And he was going to go back and distribute them to the slaves of the South. And they were going to rise up. And the South was really afraid of that. And so they started to arm themselves. Um, you know, if, if you think it's this great economic advantage, it, it shouldn't be something that, I, I, again, I pointed to the prison population. Yes, they can make things at 10 cents an hour. But when you look at the actual cost, it's fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year to make whatever basic trinkets that they make in prison. So... Slavery is a very expensive policy because you need to, well, I, I would even go further and say, you know, it hasn't really ended that, um, that is, I, I, what is your definition of slavery, but um, the, that's a whole nother topic that we might actually agree on. Well, it is because again, we're talking about the civil war. So the South seceded, you can say the South seceded because they wanted to, to preserve slavery. Um, that was a uh, minor wait, wait, policy wait, wait, in my wait, wait, view, and I think the wait, historical wait. view as well. But the the reason for the Civil War itself, you have you've provided no evidence. You provided no evidence that the North attacked them purely because they wanted, or solely because 
or even mainly because they wanted to free the Nelson, slaves. There's no reason to getting this idea. To slaves. Nobody that in the slavery said they was a to minor the issue to them. You're saying that it, right. you're like uh, you don't believe it. I, it doesn't make any difference what you believe. It matters what they said, and everyone said that. So we're not talking about the north. We're talking about the south. You I'm, just I'm said the, you don't the people, think you said that it was that big of an north, issue. Care. They were going to let them secede. Not, not to the majority of the Southerners. No, you read a Usually, quote from the the people that were writing the declarations. Does your congressman represent What's your the point views? of a republic? Otherwise, do you think your congressman represents anybody in your in your district? Yes. Well, that would be the right. point, but that doesn't mean how it's worked. How it works, right? I mean, you're a classical liberal. I thought, don't you see how the the government doesn't work? But um, what I'm saying is, you, you said the North. You have to prove was going to let them secede, right? You are saying that the North, the vast only, majority of the North, the said North they were, they would didn't... have stopped everyone from seceding for any reason. I'm saying that the evidence suggests that they would have let people secede or no. other, but they stepped in because North... of slavery on this issue because it was so major. Yes. Now we only have three minutes to go, so I'm going to read a few more quotes here just because this is important. We need to understand the historical aspect of the time. In the mid-1800s, some people actually tried to argue that slavery was not the cause of the Civil War, and the Confederates, their actual newspapers, stepped in and said that it was. The Richmond newspaper Southern Punch wrote in 1864, the people of the South, says a contemporary, are not fighting for slavery but for independence. Let us look into this matter. It is an easy task, we think, to show up this newfangled heresy, a heresy calculated to do us no good. For it cannot deceive foreign statesmen nor peoples, nor mislead anyone here nor in Yankee land. Our doctrine is this. And then in caps lock at the time, they wrote, We are fighting for independence that our great and necessary domestic institution of slavery shall be preserved. In caps lock. That the whole point of it was slavery. At a Confederate reunion in 1889, veteran Ed Baxter explained once again why the war was fought. He said, quote, in a word, the South determined to fight for her property right in slaves, and in order to do so, it was necessary for her to resist the change with the abolitionists proposed to make under the Constitution of the United States. Upon this issue, the South went to war. I repeat that the people of the South had the right to fight for their property, end quote. When asked why the South went to war, so Confederate Commander John S. Mosby answered, I've never heard of any cause other than slavery. Every Okay, that's just ridiculous. That, that's just not true at all, because General Lee himself was not an uh, advocate for slavery. How can you say it's not true at all when I'm reading you quotes? Because it's not. I'm reading you the evidence <laughs> of what they How many opinion. slaves did General Lee have? How many slaves did General Lee have? How many slaves did General Lee have? Robert E. Lee, the, the great commander of this Confederate army. I How believe, many slaves did he have? I believe he didn't have any. Correct. Right? He had zero. So why was he fighting for slavery when he had no slaves and he was against slavery? He was why would he fight for yeah, slavery? Sir, that, no, he fought, he fought, like m the vast majority of people, he fought for their states. He fought for the rights of their state and a variety of other reasons. It was not slavery. But what, did the, what was the Norse war aims? We know the mainstream Northerners in 1861 content, were content to let Sir continue to exist in the South leading up to the war. Most Northerners did not possess markedly different ideas about race and equality than the Southern themselves. Absent some grand Northern... Over the history of slavery, right. it seems very unlikely. So I'll even read in a speech that, that Lincoln gave... Uh, in Nelson, we got a minute left. Nelson, you want to make a quick closing statement? All right, Nelson. I'm not sure if if, uh, if you're for free of slaves. Are you hearing me at all? Yeah, I am. But we so we got 40 seconds to go. Okay, but let's quickly wrap this up. Okay, so like I was saying, there are a whole variety of reasons that the South seceded. The South had an absolute right to secede according to the Constitution, and the North. There is no actual evidence that the North intervened because of the slave issue. The North intervened because Lincoln wanted to preserve the Union. And and it would be also a contention of many historians that the North wanted to preserve the commodity imports from the South at 
again, price controls. Right. The North was price controlling the commodities and getting them at a very low price. So I think slavery was a very minor issue in the war itself. All right. Nelson has no evidence. As a non-Southerner. No evidence to suggest any of this. All of the evidence is exactly the opposite. I prevented a, 